Hello and welcome everybody to According to Andrew number 66, Warhammer 40k Unknown Primark Theory. So, uh, I don't think I've talked about Warhammer 40k on the channel. I'm personally a fan of uh, Warhammer 40k. Love the lore and all the, the history around it. Used to play a little bit, um, but uh, haven't in a while. Uh, it's just kind of too expensive and I have to go rebuy all my paints and I just I don't really feel like it. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that I think the lore and stuff like that around this whole universe is absolutely phenomenal and really fun. And one of the cool things about it, and I'll, I'll kind of, for those of you that are unfamiliar, I'll give a short recap of the whole thing. Um, well, actually, I guess I'll do that now because it's going to be relevant. So who are the Primarchs and all that stuff? So uh, there's this, uh, for those of you who have seen the memes about uh, God Emperor Trump and stuff like that, uh, that's a reference to... Uh, the God Emperor of Mankind, who is from 40K, and he basically created all of these legions to go and conquer the, the universe, basically America, or not America, <laughs> uh, humanity had um, gone and conquered the stars, and then there was an Age of Strife, which basically was like a Dark Age, and, and the, the uh, gla ga er, yeah, galaxy-spanning um, empire collapsed, and now the... Uh, God Emperor of Mankind is looking to rebuild that. So that's kind of his role. And to do that, he created 20 sons uh, to be the leaders of his armies and to basically be his generals uh, to make this happen. Now, uh, two of them are redacted. They're unknown. They're uh, stricken from the records, not never to be talked of again. And so there's been a lot of speculation of who those two Primarchs are. And they've never been told. And, and part of the whole gag and stuff like that it's kind of uh, similar to baby yoda and his name uh where it was more fun not to know the name than to know so at this point it's been a mystery for uh, almost going out of like 40 years or something i rather doubt that they're going to tell us who these two prim primarchs are but that allows us to make fun videos like this speculating on what they might be um so i'm going to go through each of the primarchs and the thing with each of these primarchs is they kind of represent an aspect of uh, the Emperor, right? So basically, they're a uh, 20 aspects of his psyche. But the thing is, we have two that are missing, and we don't know what those two would be. And so I have a couple theories. Uh, I basically have one that I think is pretty good, and I, I haven't heard anywhere else, and the other one's a little bit shakier. So if you guys have a, a better idea for uh, the second one and, on what uh, section of the psyche that might fill out or uh, or thing, uh, but basically I have a, a model for why these two were taken out that I think is pretty solid, and then uh, I'll let you guys maybe come up with what it could possibly be. So, <clears throat> uh, we have the different legions. So we have, for the first legion, we have Leon L. Johnson, who you see pictured here, and on the, the left-hand side of the screen, and he is basically, uh, represents the tactician, uh, he's the tactician, the tactical mind of the overarching uh, thing, and he's the so that's what he's known for he, he's the tactical genius of uh of the emperor uh the second primarch is one of those that was uh, stricken from the records uh fulgrim is the third primarch pictured here uh his basic quirk is that he's like a perfectionist he's got to be perfect in all things and uh this that strive for perfection so that's kind of his his gimmick uh and People might disagree. Some of these are probably not going to be up for debate. There's a couple that I was kind of questionable about as to exactly what their trade is that they fit or filled. Um, so if you guys have any ideas for ones that, that might be better fits, uh, let me know. Uh, but some of these are, uh, I think, pretty straightforward and, and most people would agree on, especially the next one. Uh, number four is Perturbo, uh, and he is the siege master. He's a, the master of being able to uh, besiege something and be able to take it. Um... And then number five is Jagadai Khan. He he's basically uh, supposed to be a representation of, like, the uh, Genghis Khan and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, you got speed. His, his characteristics are speed and aggression, right? Uh, kind of like a Blitzkrieg style. Uh, and so it's that, that kind of offensive, aggressive style and, uh, and tactical, or not tactical, but uh, military doctrine, I guess, uh, of thinking, thinking in that... Um, aggressive manner is his his thing uh the next guy my favorite primarch uh lehman russ he is basically a space viking so he represents ferocity and uh and the fierceness that 
is exuded by the Emperor. Uh, next is the counterpart to Perturbo, uh, Rogaldorn, and he is all about fortifications, so while Perturbo is the master of siege, uh, Rogaldorn is the master of fortification. Uh, the next guy is Conrad Cruz. Uh, he is a bit of a psychopath, and I think he represents... This one's questionable. This is one of my more questionable ones that I wasn't really sure what to put for him, because basically, uh, I put tyrannical order. So basically, he he ran this place uh, where basically all the rules, like you had to follow all the rules in here, and if you broke any rule, you're basically executed. Uh, and it was kind of like... Because um, he, he had a psychic ability to be able to kind of perceive when people were going to do bad things. So it was kind of like uh, that one movie where you basically get arrested before your, you commit a crime. Uh, I forgot what the name of that movie was, but it had... Uh, eh. Anyway, so that's what they do. And... Uh, or that's, that's kind of his thing and what he does. And so, like, he's someone that demands basically order but he, he enforces it in a massively ty uh, tyrannical way and there's a lot of aspects of the emperor in which he kind of does that where he just like makes really weird rulings and does things where he's like forces people to do stuff that just it's obviously just going to make and create animosity but he does it anyway so i think uh tyrannical order is a good uh, representation of conrad cruz let me know if you guys disagree um the next one that we got here is Sanguinius, the one who is loved by all. And Sanguinius was actually also kind of hard to place because he's he obviously has the wings and stuff. That isn't really indicative. Uh, the big thing is everybody loves Sanguinius, right? He's, uh, he's, there's just something about him that everybody can seem to get along with the guy and uh, everybody loves this guy. So I think he best represents uh, diplomacy in that regard. You know, he's, he doesn't have to fight everyone. He can kind of make all the brothers who some of them have internal rifts and kind of there's little clicks and stuff like that. Uh, he can kind of transcend all that, get everybody to kind of cooperate, work together. So I think diplomacy works best for him. Um, Loyalty is maybe another one, but uh, this one, again, is a little bit more up in the air as to exactly what characteristic is specific to him. Uh, and part of the way that this works is some of these characters that are a little bit more uh, fleshed out or like in depth kind of thing and have, have more of a well-rounded character, aren't necessarily as uh, pigeonholed and, and just a uh, a caricature of a emotion, basically given flesh. Uh, so that's Sanguinius. Uh, then you have Ferris Manius, Ferris Manus, uh, Iron Hands, and he basically is the master engineer. His, uh, he's very good at weapon craft and all that stuff. There's a couple different... Um, Primarchs that are good at that, but he is kind of the one that stands out and is that is his exceptional thing. He's much more uh, kind of aligned with the Forge Worlds and the tech side of the Imperium. You know, um, not really working for the Mechanicus, but a lot more aligned with the whole Mechanicus uh, side of it. Uh, the 11th Primarch is another one that was redacted, so that's the other redacted one that we don't have. Uh, and then uh, Angron is number 12. Uh, who is the embodiment of anger. Surprise, surprise with his name. Um, he had, like, these nails that basically drive him insane and are slowly killing him, drived into his head, and uh, that pisses him off a lot. So that is his story. And so he's an angry boy that goes and slaughters and devours worlds, and that's why his legion is called the World Eaters, because they're kind of insane. Um, next is what is effectively the uh, statecraft person of the whole thing, uh, Robert Gurleman. Uh, Gilliman, and he, his whole thing is he's basically a Roman, right? The uh, the Romans, and they're known for building and building of empire and statecraft. Uh, that is this guy to a T. So uh, he is the statecraft guy, and his his legion is basically uh, Rome in space. <clears throat> uh, Mortorian, basically a Grim Reaper vibe. Uh, lived on a planet where there was a bunch of pestilence and and. Uh, and death and, and fog of that was poisonous and all that good stuff. Uh, so his kind of thing is resilience, you know, being able to breathe in. And actually, uh, after he got off his planet, he has this thing that bakes it so he continues to breathe this, like, noxious air. Uh, so he's kind of built up this tolerance. He's, he's more of a... His whole thing is res resilience and strength, and that fits in really well with uh, who he ends up aligning with 
uh, later on during the Horus Heresy, his uh, uh, Chaos God that he aligns with. Uh, next is Magnus the Red, uh, or Magnus One Eye, and he his thing is that he's psychic. Uh, the God Emperor is a master psyker, and this is the there's a couple of them that have uh, psychic abilities. I believe Sanguinius has some minor stuff. Conrad Cruz has some, uh, but Magnus is the uh, prime psyker of the entire group, and his entire legion are uh, very adept at uh, at psychic abilities. Uh, you have Horus, who becomes the War Master, and uh, that is his thing: is that he is the War Master. Uh, you know, he is a well-rounded uh, someone who can. He like you have Le Leonel Johnson, who is very good on the battlefield and can make tactical decisions. But his War Master, he was appointed to War Master because uh, not only is he he's good at the logistical side, the, the larger scale stuff, coordinating the various legions and stuff like that, and making sure stuff gets done on a uh, mass operational uh, scale so and strategic scale so he works on the strategic scale where that is his his genius is his st strategical side so that's where uh, Horus lines up uh, Logar of the word bears uh, he is theology this is kind of the best I could come up uh, in terms of thing for him so his theology is that uh he believes that the emperor is a god, the god emperor, uh, but during this time he claims that there is no religion, that the god emperor claims there is no religion, that he shouldn't be worshipped as a god or whatever, but uh, everybody needs someone to worship kind of thing, or uh, man needs god, whether it is um, the Christian god that we talk about, or uh, whatever gets filled with that, that theological void gets filled with something, and so uh, wrote Logar kind of represents this. That this isn't something that technically the God Emperor exudes, but I thought it, it fit more than anything else for Logar. Uh, next we have Vulcan. So he kind of has two things. Uh, his big thing is he's empathetic, which doesn't really sound like the Emperor, but something that does, definitely is a trait from the Emperor is that he's a perpetual. So basically, uh, he can never die. Uh, if he does die, he's just basically reborn immediately, and and all of his wounds or stuff like that get healed. Uh, so I don't know if there is a way to kill a perpetual or not. Um, there might be if you like, I don't know, throw them into a star or something like that. But uh, in general, perpetuals uh, can never die. So that is his thing. And again, he is more empathetic towards uh, the people than most of his brothers. Actually, all of his brothers. <clears throat> Next, we have Corex Cruz. Uh, his thing is that he's stealthy, even though he doesn't look like it. Um, so... Yeah, his legion is really good at stealth. They they can kind of sneak in and, and ambush people, and that was part of the uh, the jump packs that they used, is they would use that to uh, spring the leap on people, be able to sneak into spots and then uh, surprise them when uh, available. So he's stealth. And then the last two, Alpharius and Omegaron, uh, the twin brother legion, uh, their thing is infiltration, right? Uh, the joke, if you are unfamiliar, goes, uh, you know... Who are you? And it's like, oh, it's Alpharius. And then everyone's Alpharius because, uh, you know, they the trick is that, you know, they they infiltrate and they can um, disperse and hide hide in plain sight kind of thing, and uh, and trick people into doing their their stuff or not stuff, but uh, yeah, they're they're infiltrators and gatherers and spies kind of thing, and not necessarily the stealth surprise attack thing that that Corex is. So that's the thing that differentiates those those two. So, now that we have a sense of all of the different aspects in there, um, one of the things that I thought was standing out and missing uh, quite blatantly was a genetic engineer. So, the God Emperor of uh, mankind is the best genetic engineer of all time. And for some reason, he there's no son of his that has the trait or is able to do uh, genetic engineering. And... Uh, Funnily enough, one of my friends is uh, about to queue up some Horus Heresy games. <laughs> um, look at that little, not paradox, coincidence. Um, so there's nobody that does scientific and genetic engineering. And we know that, you know, the em it's not the only, th or the Emperor isn't the only one that can figure out how this genetic stuff works because there's, in some of the newer stuff from 40K, you have Belsarius Call, who basically creates a new, uh, new Primark, or not a new Primark, a new 
era of Space Marine called the Primaris Space Marines. So it's not like it can't be done, and but we haven't seen it done until recently. And sure, there's an aspect of it that's just marketing and sales and all that stuff. But uh, it's interesting that there was no genetic engineering Primark. And one of the reasons I think this is the case is because I think it was one of the killed off Primarchs. Because this Primark would have represented a major threat to the Emperor. If you have someone that can uh, genetically engineer or even enhance the creations that he's made, uh, you can he can grow in strength and create his own set of Primarchs to potentially challenge the Emperor, and he isn't reliant on the Emperor and the gene seeds that are set within the uh, Primarchs, or within the soldiers themselves to continue to uh, get new soldiers and stuff like that. He could, they could effectively build an, their own army independent of the Emperor and go and attack and crush him, and even if he was able to cut off most of his supplies, uh, if he got enough allies, he could defeat and overthrow the emperor so that's a big threat to his power and since that is the ultimate goal of taking over the entire world and also it's insinuated through various um various things in the lore and stuff like that that uh the basically these primarchs are going to be thrown away once the overall plan was done uh they made it sound like they also have said things like, oh yeah, they would have like apartments and stuff like that. But if you look at what uh, the Emperor did with the Thunder Legions, or the Thunder Warriors when he was done conquering Earth. So basically what happened is the Emperor went and and conquered all of uh, Earth, or Terra. And once he conquered all of Terra, then he went and expanded out into the, the other world. But the Thunder Warriors were a prototype for the uh, Space Marines. And once he conquered all of Earth with the Thunder Warriors, he took all of them, and slaughtered them all, and then uh, replaced them all with the Space Marine Legions. Uh, so he's not exactly known to have a heart, let's put it that way. Uh, there's arguments that they were unstable, and they, there was other genetic issues with them, and they were going to become an issue, blah, blah, blah. But uh, that's that's pretty hardcore, no matter which way you slice it, uh, to just slaughter all those people uh, that, in the thousands that literally just gave you your empire. So... Uh, because of all, and this is one of the things that sparks off the Horus Heresy as well, potentially. Uh, so, with all that kind of taken in mind, the Emperor's ultimate goal is power and to control all of the galaxy for humanity. And so, with that in mind, it makes sense that someone with genetic engineering, uh, aptitude would be a major threat to his power and someone he would want to get rid of right away. So, that's one of them. Right, and that's that one. I think is the strongest case. The second one is kind of a question. So, uh, one is that they could have been corrupted by chaos already when he he finds it. So, uh, for those of you unfamiliar, there's basically two realms. There's our realm, and then there's the chaos realm, which is uh, basically a realm of emotions uh, made material, even though it's called the immaterium, because it kind of is. But it's basically a realm of emotions that you can actually enter, uh, and that's the main way that they travel uh, through space time. Uh, and these emotions can corrupt you if you, uh, kind of let them. So you have rage, you have change, you have, uh, lust, and you have pestilence are the four things. And so they, those things can corrupt you. So he could, when he found the, that person, they could have already been corrupted. He could have wiped them out. That's very possible. Um, obviously there's the genetic engineering thing, but, uh, one of the other things that is possible is that, the person that he sent to execute the uh, genetic guy kind of was going to turn on him, and so then he had to him killed. Now, the biggest thing that's going against this is uh, Lehman Russ. So Lehman Russ is known... Let's jump. This guy. This guy was known as the Emperor's Executioner, and it's kind of insinuated from this that he killed the other two legions because this guy was also sent to kill off Magnus the Red's legion after he... Uh, went against one of the orders of the Emperor, and so he sent uh, Lehman Russ to go slaughter him. Uh, where is he? This guy. So, <clears throat> Lehman Russ was sent to destroy this guy. Um, so, that's probably what happened to both these guys, but since we don't really know, there's a lot of speculation out in the air. Uh, but, one of the ideas that I kind of had was that one of the characteristics that wasn't really embodied that I had kind of questions about was uh, the the idea of a, lo a loyal Primark, a Primark that 
uh, put loyalty to the Emperor above all else, and that was his kind of defining characteristic. You don't really have that in any of the Primarchs. There's aspects of it. Uh, you could maybe argue Sanguinius kind of bottles off of this, uh, or Horus. Um, and then the maybe best argument for it is someone that isn't even a Primarch, but it's uh, the right-hand man of the Emperor called Malkador, who's just a human, but he's basically uh, his administrative assistant kind of thing, and is his second-in-command, not second-in-command, but uh, basically his right-hand man that he trusts with a whole, whole bunch of stuff. So that kind of fills out the loyalty thing, but we're going to continue with this idea regardless. So let's say there's a Primarch that was incredibly loyal. And so he was, because the Emperor knew that above all else he was loyal, he decided to use him to execute the uh, genetic engineering Primarch. And then, and he did so because he trusted the Emperor and he was loyal to him. But after he did that, you know, he had a conscience and it was bugging him. And so those things were kind of getting to him. And it turned, it kind of, it broke his psyche, right? Someone that he had trusted had betrayed that trust and now he was really kind of had disdain for the emperor and wanted to kind of get back at him and, and turn things around on him. So, uh, because of this, he started forming, and this is when the emperor is still out campaigning with all of them. So he started forming groups with other, uh, just kind of small, uh, lodges where people can start talking and kind of getting these ideas across of, you know, why do we need the emperor? Can we be trusted? Uh, you know, he just slaughtered one of our brothers kind of thing. And, because the Emperor's out on campaign with these guys, these whispers get back to him. He finds out that that's what's going on, sends in uh, Lehman Russ, slaughters him. Uh, so that's that's one way of thinking about it. Um, is it the most likely way? Probably not. Um, but it would also kind of explain why they... Because it's one thing to remove him and have him killed off, but like, so like, Lehman Russ is sent against... Uh, Magnus, and I think most of the heresies kind of uh, redacted from the records of at least the main people, but the people that are running uh, the Imperium now in the four, this all this happened in the uh, 30,000s, now Warhammer 40k is 10,000 years in the, in the future after the events of, uh, of the Emperor trying to expand across the universe. So those records about the Horus heresy exist for like the higher ups, but they don't exist for all the lower downs. But when it came to these two Primarchs, they were completely stricken from the rep records for no one to talk about, and it was not. It was basically something that all the other Primarchs kind of didn't bring up, and it was like a, a topic that you didn't touch. And that's kind of interesting. Like, why is that the case? Uh, obviously, part of that is a worry that your that the their father, the Emperor, God Emperor, is going to exact punishment on them. But like, what is it the thing that they did uh, that exacted punishment on them? I've read a some of the Horus Heresy books, it was, it's was it been a while uh, since I looked at them, but uh, one of the first things that they they did when in the Horus Heresy books was establish these lodges, kind of a way for uh, brotherhood to be built within the, um, the chapters, and it led to seditious things. But the thing is, they were supposedly banned. And up until then, like, why would the Emperor have any reason to ban these? Uh, obviously he's psychic, he can kind of see some of the future and stuff like that, so there's an aspect of it that could be that, where he saw the future, or he saw that these, he could predict that these were going to be a problem, but at the same time, he makes so many boneheaded mistakes that would be, like, so obvious that you should have headed these off in the past, or, or dealt with them a different way, that, like, you don't need to be psychic to see this is going to have a backlash kind of thing, um, mainly when you're, I'm talking about, like, when they dealt with psychers and stuff like that, uh, that it's, it seems like, the lodge restriction wasn't necessarily something that he was pressing about, but something that he was reacting to. And the thing he could be reacting to is the attempted coup by the two, uh, by the actions he took against one of the legions, or a attempted coup by one of the legions after the actions he took against uh, one of his other Primarch legions based on uh, the various action, or based on their uh his engineering prowess, and basically, it was obviously just a, a grab for power, and so it it fosters not non-trust amongst the uh, Primarchs, and so this is kind of this seed of rebellion that was set from the Emperor's actions early on. Kind of sure, there's like the ruinous powers, the chaos gods that uh, interfere and make the Primarchs uh, half the Primarchs kind of rebel against uh, the Emperor. But 
the these seeds also could have been sown and the reason they took the second time is because of the actions of the emperor early on and also we're only kind of sure ruinous powers are not exactly good but it's not like the emperor is a net good either right uh you know the biggest thing that he um represents is uh was it social not social galactic uh order the biggest thing he represents is order and so uh that's one of the things that uh that he and so like it's order above all else and the coup was going to pretend potentially disrupt that order um so you know he you know he has that aspect of conrad cruz where it's tyrannical order and he will slaughter people if it uh, is in his interest to maintain and grow power. Uh, that kind of sums up some of my thoughts on the whole thing. Uh, basically, what happened is there was a genetic engineer that threat that was as good as the emperor that threatened his power base and his uh, his their reliance on him for genetic material to build out these legions, therefore making him independent and a threat to his overall society and his overall plan. So he had to get him removed. Uh, to do that, he used his most loyal Primarch, who was also uh, stricken from the record because after he, his the trust of the Emperor, he realized that his trust had been betrayed by the Emperor. He plotted to uh, remove him, and this plot basically got found out on the early stages, and he was also executed. Uh, so that's kind of my summary there on the whole thing. Uh, if you guys find this interesting, uh, let me know. And... Uh, and I can do more on this stuff. I, it's not like I kind of dive into the 40K stuff every day, but uh, it was an interesting idea. And if you guys have any uh, ideas on on different ways that these Primarchs could have existed, uh, it's you know it's one of those open book questions that you can kind of speculate endlessly on. So uh, let me know. But uh, shout out to Tomato Bear uh, for giving me a follow here. I really appreciate it. And uh, that this basically wraps up the video. So. Uh, do the, your thing of uh, commenting and subscribing and liking. I really appreciate that, whether you're on uh, BitChute or uh, YouTube or Podbean, uh, wherever you get your stuff. Uh, my uploads on BitChute have been hit or miss. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but um, I will... It Like, I upload it, but whether or not it gets published is kind of hit or miss. I'm not sure what, what's going on there, but um, any that don't get uploaded, I'll work on, on re-uploading here in the next couple of days. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys all for listening, and hopefully you have a good day. Goodbye.